Welcome back to Mini Nublar in Jurassic World Evolution 2. In the previous live episode of Mini Nublar, we made this petting zoo and it's pretty awesome, but it is fake. We made this before update 7 was even announced, so it's made in a way that guests can't actually get in here. I do still really like it though. But what we're gonna be doing in this episode, she says trying to build tension as if the video doesn't have a title and thumbnail, is a functioning sauropod walkthrough habitat. Update 7 making this possible is pure beautiful kismet. Thank you to Diplorex709 for the suggestion many weeks ago. I love this idea as soon as I saw it and I love that update 7 means we can make it a real thing. You can see that this build is gonna take up the majority of the free space that we have left and that is because I just want to make sure that the sauropods have the space to move around but so do the guests. So as I've done in previous episodes, I've started with a little bit of a sketch to give myself a bit of a handle, a bit of a guideline. So these arrows are going to be where people can enter the walkthrough habitat. And here we're going to have some amenities. And I wonder if you can guess what's going to go in this big circle over here. At least that's the plan. I hope we can make that work because I think that'll be really, really awesome. So our first step should be to outline the habitat, I think. And we're going to start in the water with the invisible fencing. Just going to follow that. Thank you so, so much for your patience waiting for Mini Nublar. We had to skip a week due to sick pets and also more exciting news, the new DLC and free update. And honestly, the timing of the free update could not have been better uh, because fans of Mini Nublar will know that this walkthrough habitat was planned before the free update was even announced, before we knew that we could start making actual walkthrough habitats. So yeah, timing of this was absolutely brilliant because now we can do something for real that I thought I was gonna have to fake, you know? I thought I was gonna have to line the entire path with invisible fencing and rocks and, you know, the usual tricks that we've been, uh, we've been applying to make something like that happen. But we don't have to do that anymore, which, uh, safe to say, is very exciting. So I want to have, like, a bit of a larger guest section here, because this is also the entry point of Mini Malta. Uh, so I'm going to have to have a think about that. Uh, this is going to be, like, an expressway for if people don't want to walk all the way through. Because, you know, we're going to have, like, loopy path go all the way through here. If people don't want to do that, they'll be missing out. But, you know, they have the option to not do that. They can come through here. Probably we'll be able to sneak a building in here or something. I think that will be cool. Uh, again, over here, this is going to be, like, a bit of a guest section. And I'm just starting out from here so I can get everything nice and parallel. I'm really excited about this build. Obviously, uh... I've had a lot of time to look forward to this. I hope you have as well. I think it's gonna be good. I think what I'll do is do a couple of small buildings back to back here. Oh, that's the wrong key entirely. <laughs> I think that's too close. So what if we do it like that and like that? I'm just eyeballing this. If this turns out, no, there's no way. Uh, okay. That would have been too good to be true. That would have been too good to be true. Let's be perfectly honest here. <laughs> okay. Attempt number two. Yeah, maybe. 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 Okay, so food. That's pretty good. Food. Drink. Uh, this is like the exit of our VIP section. And as always, we're gonna hide... Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Instead of using the concrete, let's actually use... Uh, the wall pieces. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, do a little wall wiggle. Okay, and then probably right from here. We're gonna do... Maybe maybe like this. Make it a little bit more special. Ooh, so, oh, so special. Look at that. Maybe even bigger. I do actually... Hmm, which path color am I gonna use? Because I think I should be consistent with that. Or should I... I should probably not use the thickest path, so maybe maybe this one. I have been using the same path color a lot, so I have to keep in mind that for other sections I really have to use a different color. But I think I think that'll work. And now we got to figure out the entry. 
there's method to the weirdness. You know there there is always method to the weirdness. There, and do something like that. All right, I think for this one... Oh, no. Oh, I should... Oh, I should be really careful to flatten everything. That's going to be super important, obviously, when you use these wall pieces. Oh, of course, it's one of the escaped velociraptors. Dang it. All right, let me, fi let me figure this out. Let me figure this out. You know, we want to make it pretty. I think... Yeah, I think that's going to work. So like that. Come on, then. Come on, then. Doesn't fit in there perfectly, but you know, we can just pull it forward. And this is gonna allow our guests to go through, but the dinosaurs that are gonna go in here actually won't be able to go through here. So that is perfection. And then, yeah, I think this path size is the way to go for in here. And we're gonna turn this into like little gardens framing that. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Uh, this entry section over here. Let's make sure that we do like different things with uh, with the different entry points. I do think I do think every entry point should have this as the entry or should we should we use this one? I just like it a lot less. This is this is this is like appropriately communicating the epicness that awaits people. I mean, they're going to be walking among the sauropods. We need to uh you know, we can't sell that short. Come on. Come on. I'm leaving some space along the path because I, I want to put, like, foliage over there. But I think it's going to be nice to have a little bit more of a decorative fencing over here. There. And that works out pretty well, actually. Oh, that works out really well. All right, so here we have another entry section into uh, into the area. I think, I think just starting with path is the way to go, actually. Okay, so let's do a different color here. Uh, so we'll match what's going on here. All right, so what's what's gonna be a cute building here? We'll just do, we'll do this. We'll do a shop. There you go. All right, so with that done, we'll have the gate and we'll use these again. Uh, this might be a little dark, but I do think it's kind of cool to have these, like, sort of welcoming you over here. It doesn't really work to try to mirror it. Oh my god, hold on. Something is, like, really struggling. Ah, oh, dang it. Yeah, that is the bug that we're dealing with currently. So I'm gonna have to turn off feeding for now and just hope that Frontier can fix this really shortly. I think the skeleton should be in, like, um... A bit of a garden. So I want to make sure that I have space for that. There, that's gonna that's gonna be like a garden at the center. Oh, clipping might be an issue now. Yeah. Usually there is a way though. You just have to find the way. I hope everyone's been in, like enjoying the uh, the update and the DLC. Let me know down below if you got the DLC and. What you've been building with it. I've I've so been looking forward to this build in particular. But also an abandoned park is like at the forefront of my thoughts. There. So do that. And then maybe like add in some rocks and stuff. That might, that might be difficult. I might not have left a lot of space for that. There. And then, and then, the rocks are a little weird. <laughs> But like with some foliage around that as well, I think that's going to be pretty, pretty pretty. And I just really like the idea of uh, making like every one of the entrance sections unique. I'm going to follow uh, this here with the wall pieces. If I can, terrain constraints might be a thing. No, they're not. Oh, cool. This is going to be a really cool like overlook from the path. So I'll probably switch it to invisible fencing here so we don't obstruct that in any way, shape or form. Here, see, so guests can stand over here and look out into, like, this vast, vast enclosure that's gonna have a lot of our sauropods. And you know I have my eyes set on the amphitheater. I mean, we have it. I need to use it. I honestly feel like maybe it's not the right choice, but it is a choice I'm gonna make. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna apply it maybe a little bit controversially because I'm gonna angle it away from... 
uh, you know, you know the that part of the building, we're angling away, so we're really not gonna see much of that. It's gonna be really confusing for boats when they approach. They're gonna see like this giant archway that says San Diego, and they're like, wait, what? Weren't we near uh, Costa Rica before? <laughs> we might have drifted off course, Captain. Oh yeah, oh, that's gonna work perfectly. So yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a stadium, so you can just imagine that, um, I don't know, there would be like an educational section where they would lure the sauropods in here and they would, you know, do a little, yeah, educational thing, talk about sauropod things. <laughs> Let's maybe switch up the path color and match match this thing a little bit. And what's really important, if you, if you are also wanting to build like a walkthrough habitat, is that you do put attractions in there as well. Cause you know, we still don't have guest viewing from the path or anything like that. So you do need to make sure that your guests actually come in here. I wanna make some space so we can get a, a bigger building going. There you go. There, so there's also some, some shape variation in here. Did I leave enough space for a bathroom? Wow, that's that's pretty good. It's almost as if I've played this game too much, you might say. Let's not though, let's not. Let's, uh, let's, not, let's not touch on that. Now I do think what we should do I think that's going to provide a little bit of realism is um, prevent the sore pods from coming in here. You know, this is a guest section. People are going to be sitting here. We're going to add tables and chairs and stuff like that. So perhaps you wouldn't really want your sore pods to walk in here because that, that that might become a little bit dangerous. So we're going to we're going to be blocking that off. I don't. Probably not with the wall pieces. Although, yeah, maybe with the wall pieces, <laughs> having said that. Actually, I actually think it's a pretty nice match with the... Yeah, so you know what, let's just do it. Yeah, for this one, we'll use these entrances because it, it doesn't have to be so grand. You had your grand entry moment already. So this makes sense. The round shape to the path probably wasn't the best idea, but I feel like it, I feel like it goes quite nicely with the amphitheater. Guests are going to be motivated to come over here because there's an attraction. There's uh, buildings over here. And I actually am also going to add like viewing towers as well. So you get like that, you know, a little bit more at the height of... A little bit more at sauropod height. We also need to be doing things with terrain elevation. We've also... I've already done a little bit... Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We've already done a little bit over here. There, so this is where you can go down. This is gonna be like a beachy section. Honestly, as big as this is, like, you run out of space pretty quickly. I think I just need to uh, make the ramp a little smaller. So then this is our little elevated path moment and you can look out over here and hopefully if the sauropods are down there, you can see them like that. Now, to get the sauropods in here, probably adding water would be the way to go. Oh, you can't do that. Great. Ah, uh, this is why you would need, like, the return of the herbivore feeder, so you can lure them in there. Obviously, like, it's really easy to lure, to lure excuse me, a carnivore in here. Herbivores are a little bit more of a challenge. Do we have a completed enclosure at this point? Uh, I do you believe so? Like, you know, as I said, we're gonna have the paths just sort of snake through this entire thing. Like, kind of like a park kind of idea. Um, but I think it helps if you put in your destinations first, so you know where the path needs to be going. I actually feel like since this one doesn't have a 360 view, we should do this. Here, maybe here. And then replace this one um, with another open one. God, I just clicked on seven wrong things. In terms of water, I think I like just the look of a big lake. I think that's what we're gonna go with. Ew. Oh God, I don't like it when you do that water. No, 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 no. So we'll use we'll use the bottom over here. There, and we'll create a nice big lake. And this is actually quite nice, that this entry point takes you right by the water. 
Ooh, could we do a bridge somewhere? We should do, oh, yes, we should do a bridge. Of course we should do a bridge. <gasps> Stop it, get some help. I can't fix you. Nobody can fix you. Get out. I always click on path when I want to go to water. I know you would like, you would make it a little bit more random lake shapey, you know? We'll, we'll figure that out, I think, when the path work is done. But yeah, this is gonna be ugh, probably a little bit further this way. We're gonna do a bridge. Okay, so for a bridge, to really make it stand out, we should do like a different color. Sure. Quite a big bridge. Now making bridges in this game is, you know, imperfect because you have to cheat. It's an illusion. <laughs> I like doing this for my bridges. There, so it has like sort of the illusion, there, that's, there's that word again, of a support. There, oh, I think that's, I think that's gonna be pretty cool. Okay, so now we're gonna lay in the rest of our path, which thickness did I use? All right, that's the thickness. Uh, maybe have like a bit of a roundabout over here. So we're literally gonna do a, a, just a big circle. There, big circle. Connect. Maybe connect this one a little bit more indirectly. So like that. Oh no, oh the clipping. I want it to be like a little, little natural, little weird maybe at times. Here, and it branches off like that right away. And then probably down here, we should also add buildings and stuff. This might be like a slightly bigger area, slightly bigger paved area. Okay, let's, let's try to make a circle in here. Nice, okay. Let's so maybe make this entrance a little bit more grand. Grander, I tell you. Okay, so this this isn't really working because right now it's not really connecting to where we need to be. So this one would maybe connect like that. This one would take you over here and uh, maybe, oh, hold on, I know. Maybe make, yeah, maybe mix it up a little bit, hold on. There, we're going for like, you know, again, weird, natural. And I feel that when people would enter the park, there would be like an information board staying, uh, saying, please stay on the path as much as possible. Unless there's like a sore pot in the way, then you're allowed to walk around it or something. But to sort of discourage people from just walking all the way around. All right, we can't add buildings like down here because that's going to obstruct our view. And we also can't really add buildings over here. So I think maybe, maybe like this. Again, you just really have to make sure that you put actual things in here. Because for some reason, guess, you know, they don't care all that much about walking among sauropods. No, that's that's not cool. They care about shops. All right, she's, she's thinking. She's thinking. What I think I'll do is we'll do a little circle here. Little, little beachy circle. Circle's kind of the theme here. What? Uh, but what we'll do with this circle is I'm going to fill it in with path entirely. But it's going to be another place where the sauropods won't be able to go because we're going to line it with path and stuff so we can add a sitting opportunity. Because I feel like you wouldn't leave tables and chairs anywhere where the sauropods would be able to trample them. You know, you would, you would, you would want to stop that from happening because that gets expensive after a while. You know, after a couple of, after a couple of trampled tables and chairs, you really just want to stop that from, 
from continuing the madness. After this, we really only have one more episode to go. If you have like any suggestions for what we should do with like the last bits of space, which is this right here and like this weird section. And then that really is the end to Mini Nublar. But before you get too sad, that means that the tour is gonna happen pretty soon. Uh, that's pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to that. You already know, you already know what I want to do. And that is my beloved, my monorail. We're going to do a little bit of this. And then we can just add like a nice fountain in here. I think that'll be pretty. There, obviously all of that's going to be like decorated and stuff. Uh, I don't think I used enough elevation differences in this habitat. So I want to sneak in a little bit. It's not going to be very much, but just a little bit. Let's actually um, mimic what we did by the amphitheater. So here, like this, because we did something similar over over here and like repeating design elements like this. I feel like calling it a design element is overstating it a little bit. <laughs> But I think that helps in just... Why is it uneven? I think it helps tie things together. This one has like a bit of a larger opening. That's okay. Here you'd also fill this one in. So it's like recognizable as the same design elements. And I think that helps tie everything together. Make it make more sense. Make it make sense. <gasps> oh, I'm having a think because what could have also been cute was to have a vehicle tour go through as well. I think that's going to be too busy. Honestly, <laughs> this honestly, it's turning out smaller than I thought. But if you're building something similar like this, um, I think if, if it wasn't for the big body of water I have in here, it could work really well, which is to also put a tour in here. But I think we have so many elements already with the big body of water, the monorail roundabout, the big guest section, the amphitheater. It's getting a little bit too much for me to be able to fit a tour, of, like a like going through here and crossing over the path. I think that would be too much. Um... But that would be pretty cool if you can make that work as well. <gasps> no, I know what I want to do. A hotel, but like this kind of hotel and pretend that this, yes, 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 yes. This is like the sauropod feeding attraction. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, why not? And uh, yeah, guess could come over here. Sauropods would bend down. Eat what you have to offer. Your soul, your firstborn. I don't know. Hold on, I'm gonna save this. Save. I'm gonna start a new save. Mini Nublar. Six. <laughs> Just so I have something to come back to. I'm gonna see if I can make it work over here. And use this bit of elevation. So that the balcony is actually at like a better height for hand feeding sauropods. It doesn't honestly really work too well because of the sloping. But I think it looks kind of cute here. Maybe I'll just, maybe I'll just have both. I am losing my repeated design elements. That's a bit of a shame, but I don't think that's a good enough reason. What I could actually do, yeah, just make one side a little bit wider. There. Wow, surprise speed build. <laughs> At this point, I had already been recording slash building for a little over an hour. And that's usually where I cap off the episodes because, you know, when I edit it down, that ends up being about 25 to 30 minutes. And that's the length that, you know, you want to keep your episodes at. But obviously there was still so much more to do, pretty much all of the decorating. So that's why I just knew that I had to, okay, focus Evo, just get cracking on all of this decorating and then we'll turn that into a speed build. So that's what we're doing right here. I spent another hour decorating like the interior of the habitat. And as you can see the surrounding areas as well, you know, adding detail to the entry areas. Um, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to split that up into two separate episodes, you know, I, f f I hope that you appreciate this. If you do give the video a like, uh, by the way, Oh, what you see me doing here, like the green, yellow, red flags. What I had in my mind is that those are like information slash instruction signs. So 
on the green flag, it's actually, you know, best behavior. This is how we expect you to behave when you enter this habitat. These are the do's. On the uh, yellow flag, it would be like, you know, a little bit of a caution. Hey, if a sauropod steps onto the path, walk around, stuff like that. And then on the red flag, those would be the don'ts. Like, don't do flash photography, don't make loud noises, don't try to touch the sauropods outside of, you know, the... Uh, the hand feeding opportunities stations. So that's sort of what I had in my mind with those flags. In the meantime, I'm going absolutely mental with this decorating. I had to speed this footage up quite a bit because again, it's a full hour. Uh, I do really like how we hit the invisible fence at the base of that like plateau, which is always, it's always funny to me when I say things like, hide the invisible fence because it's such it's such a paradox but yeah it's something that uh, is necessary in the game because it's not entirely invisible uh i, I like you saw I'm, I'm decorating like our little roundabout section within the habitat itself i really had to refrain myself from doing a lot of decorating necessarily and that's because obviously all of the decoration items have a hitbox that obstructs the sauropods movement right and we want to we want to make sure that they can still move around relatively freely. So normally all of that like blank unlined path would make my heart hurt and it still does a little bit. But I can't go overboard with with decorations inside the habitat for obvious reasons because the sauropods need to be able to move around. I added a lot of the pink rocks which really helped to sort of ground the amphitheater. So that's a tip. You know we've been... Um, I've been getting like comments about the amphitheater from people, and it is a really cool suggestion from people who were hoping that the the rock that the amphitheater is made of would actually match whatever biome that you're that you're placing it in. Uh, but I think that uh, in the absence of that, placing a couple of those desert rocks, those pink rocks around it, really helps blend it more into the environment. You can see it right there, like all of those loose rocks I placed in front of it. It's a little thing, but visually I think it helps a lot to make it stand out a little less and make it, yeah, look look more like it belongs there and was uh, and that the stone was also actually mind there so that's why also that rock formation in front there is pink getting a little bit of the tropical rock in there and further into the habitat it's mostly tropical rock with a little bit of pink so that's how you sort of blend the two together i think that worked out really really well and is something is like a teeny tiny tip if you're gonna use the amphitheater in your uh, your different biomes. So this is the little guest section where we're gonna have seats and stuff like that. And this is the part that I did line with planters. Again, so that the sauropods would not be able to enter this specific circular little plaza. So people can have like their lunch here, just have a little bit of a sit, a little bit of a rest without having to, you know, worry that they're gonna have to save their overpriced sandwich from a sauropod coming uh, over to stomp on them. And as I continue to build, let me just again say thank you so much for all of the support on Mini Nublar. Thank you so much for being patient with the missed episode last week due to the DLC and my sick rabbit. And also huge thanks to just like the support on the channel for the past month and with the release of the DLC. Like it's so amazing to see so many new people come to the channel. And old fans, new fans, I hope that you're having fun with this series. And I'm really, really excited about the tour for this i hope you are as well and if you're not subscribed yet consider subscribing to the channel for the tour of mini nublar and of course the next building series that we will be starting as soon as the tour for mini nublar is done i'm gonna round it off right here i'm gonna show you a little bit of a clip at the end of what we've created but of course for the full showcase of the entire park and this habitat as well you are gonna have to stick around for that tour coming in about a week or two. And of course, don't forget to comment down below what you want to see for the final episode. Like, what is the final habitat that we're gonna add to Mini Nublar? I'm I'm feeling the pressure of like selecting something. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and see what you guys come up with. Cause this whole this whole series has been so collaborative, honestly, with you guys like inputting these amazing ideas. Like this idea right here from Diplo Ricks, but many of the previous episodes were also inspired by feedback from you guys. So I, I appreciate it so so much how engaged you've been with this whole series. And I'm looking forward to your requests slash suggestions 
for the final episode. And in the meantime, this is what we created. And again, if you want to see the full tour and all of the detail and all of the magic, then consider subscribing for the tour. Thank you so much for watching, liking, subscribing, and until next time, enjoy the game.